Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today I'd like to take a look at this game right here, a game from 2012 called The Resistance. Uh, and uh, this is a neat little game that I've played in a number of different types of situations, and it has gone over famously in most of those situations uh, with only a couple of, uh, you know, dud appearances uh, in the night. Basically, uh, you are... Uh, split up and it is a deduction game where, where some players are going to be spies, other players are going to be resistance members and they're trying to uh, run certain missions and those missions will be dependent upon who's going on them, whether they succeed or they fail. Uh, there is voting to see who gets to be on the mission and all that kind of stuff and it is basically an, an exercise in trying to figure out who is buffing who and who is on what side. So that's the resistance. Let me show you how it plays and then we'll talk about it. Okay, in the game of resistance, you're going to have a tableau here that is uh, face up based on the number of players. For example, a five player game uh, will have this tableau. If you have six players, you'll turn it over and this is the one you'll have. Seven players, so forth and so on, on up to ten players. And on the tableau you have everything basically that you need to get the uh, game set up. You know that you'll have five players and uh, so there will be two spies in those players. So you'll have to have five roll cards and then uh, two of them will be spies, three of them will be uh, resistance uh, members, and then you'll give those a shuffle together. Um, once those are done, you pass these out to everyone, and then everybody will look at their roll card. If it is a blue background, like so, then you are a resistance player. If you if it is a red background, it is a spy player. All right. And um, at this point, once everybody has seen their role, everybody will bow their heads um, and uh, make it to where they cannot see or hear anything that's going on around them. And then the person that is uh, uh, running the event will say, spies look up. The spies will look up find out who each other are and then put their heads back down and then the person um, running the event will say everybody's heads are up and then the actual game can begin. Now in the uh, in the game The Resistance you are trying to get uh, you're going to be going on missions and of course the resistance leaders want uh, blue successes and the spy leaders want red successes. Uh, or red failures rather. And so each mission uh, is gone on by the number of people that is within the circle. So the first mission will only have two people going on it, while the second one will have three, the second one, I'm um, sorry, the third one will have two, fourth one will have three, and the fifth one will have three. The goal of the resistance is to have the most blue successes out there. The goal of the spies is to have the most uh, red failures on the tableau at the end of round five, if you must go that way, if you must go that far. Now, what will happen is someone will be randomly determined to be the leader, and then that person will be able to choose a number of people, as denoted by the number of the board, that will be the people that go on the mission. And they do so by handing out the weapons uh, for that mission. So they will choose one person over here and maybe one person over here, or maybe they can even choose themselves. It really doesn't matter, uh, except for the fact that you are trying not to have spies uh, go on the missions so that they don't have a chance to fail the missions. At this point, once uh, the leader has chosen the two people, as denoted here, that will go on the mission. Everybody will take their uh, approve or reject um, vote tokens and cast them face down. All right. And what we're what you're voting on at this point is you're voting on whether or not this team is a team that you will feel comfortable with in order to get a success. If the number once everybody reveals their tokens, if the number of approves 
outweighs the number of rejects, then that mission goes forward. If the number of rejects outweigh the number of approves, then uh, it is rejected. The first player or the leader token is passed to the next person clockwise and another team is chosen and voted upon. But if it approves, it goes forward. So the two people would take their cards and they would choose whether they want it to pass or fail, be a success or fail. Um, if you are a resistance player, of course you want to play the success. If you are a spy, you may or may not want to play the fail because uh, one of the things of this game is that you do not necessarily want to um, be known as the spy. Uh, you want to stay hidden. You want people to think that you are the resistance. And so you may or may not want to fail, especially if there are only two people going on uh, the mission. You may want to wait when there are m more people going on the mission uh, to strike. Uh, but again, that is completely up to the spies when they do and when they do not play those fail cards. If there are more successes than fails, then the mission succeeds. If there are more fails, I'm sorry, if there are only one fail uh, in the group, then that mission fails and a red token would be put out there. If it succeeds, a blue token would be put out. After the mission has been completed, whether it was a success or a failure, uh, the team leader token would pass clockwise to the next player. They would choose who gets the weapons for the next round this time including three so three weapons would be handed out that team would be voted upon and if it is rejected then you uh, pass the leader token and make another team or if it is approved then that mission goes on uh, the uh, people on the mission decide whether it succeeds or it fails and so forth and so on until one side or the other has a total of three, which would be a majority of three <clears throat> successes or failures. As soon as there are three successes, the resistance wins. As soon as there are three failures, the uh, spies win uh, collectively. So, and that's how you play resistance. You know, it never fails whenever I bring out the resistance that uh, an interesting dynamic enters into the group. Um, normally timid people uh, will suddenly uh, and really without uh, any kind of warning uh, come out of their shell and start accusing people left and right of being a spy because those other people are acting differently than they would normally act. Uh, people who normally act one way suddenly begin acting a completely different way because of uh, this or because of that and there's a whole bunch of different things that go into it. When you try to start bluffing you can imagine that you can automatically almost see who is a good liar, who is not a good liar. And uh, usually, especially if you know the people that you're playing with, it's a very enjoyable experience because you see people that are coming out of their own comfort zones. And that's one of the things that I like about the resistance. It is simply a game that breaks down barriers and um, uh, helps people kind of relax a little bit sometimes. Now, I have seen games get rather tense where uh, one person is yelling across the table, oh, I know you're a spy and all this other kind of stuff. And, and that's fun in and of itself, uh, as long as it doesn't get out of hand. Um, there are different ways to uh, mix up the game other than what I showed you. Um, there are, uh, you, you can play with blind spies where the spies don't know who each other are. Uh, you can use these um, plot cards that are that'll shake up the game in a little bit and change how you play the game uh, for example the overheard conversation you get to actually look at one of the roll cards of the pe people either to your left or to your right um, uh, taking responsibility you have to take somebody else's plot card um, this one says you can choose another player to submit their mission cards face up so what those success or fail mission cards that person will have to play face up so again these plot cards can be introduced once you're familiar with the game and you got a good grasp on the mechanics and everything like that to kind of shake it up a little bit so it does have a lot of replayability and the amount of replayability will change from group to group so i think it's one of one of the 
Uh, it's one of my favorite games uh, to play in situations like youth group or uh, other kinds of party type atmospheres because it doesn't have to have a board. Um, you can play this in a group. It's actually pretty fun. I like that it has a set number of people on the upper limit, only 10. Uh, then it can also go down to five. So it's, it's, and it uh, translates really well between those different player levels. So uh, Resistance gets a two thumbs up from me uh, and uh, just a game that I've always enjoyed bringing out and I will, I, I, I submit that it will probably be in my collection for quite some time. So that is The Resistance by Andy Borden Cards. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.